Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And I am proud to be joined by Senators Stabenow, Klobuchar, Blumenthal, Schatz, and Warnock. And again, as I said last week when we did this, a special thanks to our wonderful chart makers. Now, I want you to know, sir, look at these terrific explanations. <laughs> those in your story. Yeah. And then the coup de grace. He ripped out Project 2025. Did he rip out? Because they're bogus. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. It's everybody. been nice meeting with you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I, wanted to, I do want to thank Senators uh, Stabenow, Klobuchar, <laughs> Blumenthal, Schatz, and Warnock for being here. Um, and each of them talking about a portion of 2025. There is so much in it, we could be here every day for a long time. But St Senator Stabenow will talk about the middle class taxes, Klobuchar on democracy, Blumenthal on border security, Schatz on national security, and Warnock on workers' rights. Now, last week, <coughs> Senate Democrats came together to shine a light on just some of the dangers of Project 2025. So last week, we sound an alarm on all of the ways Project 2025 would decimate American education, women's reproductive freedoms, our veterans, housing, and more. But of course, that's just a fraction of the horrors that Project 2025 holds. That's why today we will highlight a few others that hold grave consequences for American families, our national security, and our very democracy. So we're here to shine a light on Project 2025 once again this time by looking at ways it would raise taxes, hurt American workers, compromise border security, threaten our democracy, and make America less safe. And as we go over each issue, <clears throat> I want to remind everybody, this is the Trump plan. Project 2025 has been led by former Trump officials who put together a blueprint of what they want to get done should Trump, God forbid, get in office. So this is the Trump plan led by so many of his former employees, and they said it. The Heritage Foundation, who he relies on, said this is what we're going to do. So make no mistake about it. They're trying to run away from it now because it's so devastating for just about every American, but that's the plan. Make no mistake about it. Um, excuse me if we take... Donald Trump's attempts to distance himself from Project 2025 with the world's largest grain of salt. Donald Trump, a few years ago, said that the Heritage Foundation would, quote, these are his words, lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our mo movement would do. Again, Donald Trump, the Heritage Foundation, which sponsored Project 2025, would lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement would do. The head of the Heritage Foundation said earlier this year that his goal was, quote, institutionalizing Trumpism, unquote, including Project 20, including with Project 2025. Let me say those words again as well. Institutionalizing Trumpism. That's what this does. And what does that mean? First, 2025 is going to punish middle class families with hurt, hurtful tax hikes while raising tax cuts for the wealthy. The plan is estimated to raise taxes on middle class families by $3,000. It'll give one point, a, a $1.5 million tax break to the ultra wealthy who earn more than $10 million. Can you believe that? One tax cut for the ultra rich wasn't enough for Donald Trump and his MAGA right. They want to do it again at the end of the day. That's always their end game. Tax cuts for the ultra wealthy paid for by everybody else. Second, 2025 will punish working families Trump pretends to care about. American workers will work longer hours for less pay as overtime pay is undermined. Many people have to work 40 hours and not get overtime pay. The Biden administration moved to correct that, and now they want to undo it. Dagger at the heart of the middle class. An estimated 4.3 million shift workers could have their overtime and wage protections eroded as guaranteed weekly time and a half pay is ended. And at the time of immense global instability with Russia invading Ukraine, Iran funding terror groups, the CCP increasing its aggression in the Indo-Pacific, 
Project 2025 makes America less safe, much less safe. 2025 breaks down the State Department, has us withdraw from the World Bank, increases the risk of catastrophic nuclear war, and wastes vital national security resources to finish Donald Trump's ineffective border wall. And for all the hard rights lip service to border security, Project 2025 rejects the bipartisan border security plan we released earlier this year, the strongest bipartisan border security bill in decades. Instead of effective bipartisan policy, 2025 would drive a policy of utter cruelty for mass deportations with little to no due process. It even risks deporting three million dreamers. Can you believe it? That's what, that's the risk of this plan. Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, and Project 2025 have spread a message of hatred against immigrants looking for a better life in America. They have spread lies about Haitian immigrants. They have demonized refugees, and Project 2025 would lay the foundation for a mass deportation apparatus that would inflict untold pain on millions of families without making our country any safer. And finally, 2025 would weaken our democracy by opening the floodgates to foreign interference and big money in our democracy. 2025 will shut down proven efforts to block foreign interference in our elections, gutting the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency while eviscerating our campaign finance laws. When it comes to the evil and sinister Project 2025, I have three Brooklyn words, NFW, you fill in the blanks. Senate Democrats will fight these policies with all we've got. Our future is too important not to. Senator Stabenow on tax policy. Well, thank you, Senator Schumer. It's great to be here with my colleagues. Uh, the fact of the matter is that 2025 is a project that would completely upend the middle class and the quality of life of the majority of Americans. And that's not an exaggeration when you list to, listen to what Senator Schumer was saying. Um, he is going to do what he always wants to do and Republicans have done, which is big tax cuts for the wealthy, for big corporations, try to stop efforts to make corporations and, and the wealthiest Americans pay their fair share and at the same time go after middle class tax cuts and those efforts that lift people up into the middle class. They attack the child tax credit. They attack the earned income tax credit. They attack everything that is supportive of those working hard every day. It may be two part-time jobs or three part-time jobs or it may be a, a, a low wage or, or middle income job. But those are the folks that need to be lifted up with tax cuts, not Donald Trump's rich billionaire friends. So under Project 2025, a family of four making $110,000 a year, family of four, would be hit with a $3,000 tax increase. But if good news for everyone here, if your household makes more than $10 million a year, raise your hand, <coughs> you will get up to $2.4 million tax cut if you make more than $10 million a year. So it's really clear who Donald Trump cares about. They're going to do everything they can to skyrocket costs for families and small businesses who are trying to keep the lights on and, and keep the kids fed and, and all of the other costs that they have by adding a national sales tax, which is, is, which is what he intends to do that will up costs additionally. This is going to cost Americans nearly $4,000 a year. And we already know that millions of Americans continue to struggle with health care, and their project would tax worker benefits, like health care. When you think you've got a great job with health care benefits, now you could be taxed on those benefits. And let me finally just set, say this as chair of the Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee. We had all of the agricultural groups in last week talking to us about the needs, prices falling, the need to support agriculture. Let me just make it very clear that Project 2025 guts all of the programs that the farmers have been in talking to us about, eliminates those things that they say are at the top of the list for family farmers, eliminates the key support they need and would, re and would receive in the Farm Bill. 
making it extremely difficult for family farmers to be able to survive. So 2025 is a bad deal, and all it does is show us whose side Donald Trump is on. And Klobuchar on democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Schumer, Leader Schumer, for calling us together on this Project 2025, as you might say in Brooklyn, NFW, which in Minnesota means not for women <laughs> um, <laughs> or men. Um, uh, when you, thank you, uh, just a nice little euphemism <laughs> for us. Um, and I want to thank my colleagues for being here. Um, and my specific focus today is on uh, the danger that Project 2025, which is, by the way, not the number of felony indictments Donald Trump is facing, but in fact, um, what uh, Tim Walls called the playbook um, at our convention, and that's what it is. And when it comes to democracy, it is truly poses a danger to our system of checks and balances. I lead with this topic because uh, Senator Warner just had a major hearing yesterday that I suggest you look at on the threats from the outside when it comes to our democracy with uh, Russia and Iran. We've already seen um, the actual evidence of what Russia has been trying to do. Uh, intel agencies have been warning for months that foreign interests like Iran, China, and Russia are trying to mess around in our democracy. Yeah, what does Project 2025 does? Big surprise, given that we know what Donald Trump said about Kim Jong-un, what he has said favorable about Vladimir Putin. It would actually make it easier for foreign adversaries to interfere in our elections by shutting down the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agencies' efforts to combat foreign disinformation. It said it would narrow their mission about our election and preventing U.S. Cyber Command from working on efforts to strengthen election security. <coughs> you do remember that after CISA said the 2020 election, remember that, was the most secure in American history? Donald Trump fired its director, Chris Krebs, his own appointee, who had earned bipartisan support for his work to counter disinformation. It is just another proof point which is consistent with what Project 2025 says when it talks about limiting uh, the work of this agency. Just this week, the current director of CISA, Jen Easterly, said that our election infrastructure has never been more secure and Project 2025 would be a massive step backwards on this. It would also inject partisanship into federal agencies that are critical to protecting our free and fair elections like the DOJ and open the door to the weaponization of the department to harass voters and election officials. It would do this under the guise of combating voter fraud uh, even though experts have found that committing voter impersonation fraud is so rare that an American is more likely to be struck by lightning. Yet they are using this, they are using this um, to make claims um, about fraud and then using that to weaponize our agency. It would open the floodgates to even more secret money in our elections by weakening campaign finance laws and calling the FEC contribution limits. This is what it says, um, saying they should be much higher. You've already seen uh, what they have done in the past with the Citizens United case, uh, making it impossible to enforce the work that John McCain had done on election laws. So there you go. It sets out in detail the plan to fire tens of thousands of civil servants without cause, those charged with protecting our health and safety as well as law enforcement and national security personnel and replace them with partisan loyalists. We're talking about giving one person nearly unchecked power over everything just months after the Supreme Court, and I thank Senator Schumer for his bill he has on this, already undermined the fundamental principle that no one is above the law. So let us be clear, Project 2025 poses an enormous threat to our democracy, and the words of the candidates of Donald Trump and of J.D. Vance simply have backed it up every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Senator Blumenthal on border security. Uh, I have one word for Project 2025. Forget about it. <laughs> that may sound like three words, but in Brooklyn it's one word. It's on the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Go on the Brooklyn Bridge, they say. Forget about it. Uh, you know, uh, there, there is probably no topic on which the Trump-Vance views align more exactly with Project 2025 than on immigration. It is extreme, cruel, inhumane, and draconian. It would adopt police state tactics 
to break down doors, invade people's homes, and it would involve the threat of deportation, three million dreamers. But it also would wreak havoc on local economies because it contemplates deporting people who are here legally right now who are vital to businesses and to universities. Project 2025 calls for a drastic reduction to legal immigration, which would undermine our economy, our workforce, by slashing programs that allow small businesses to hire temporary workers and make it harder for universities to recruit talented students from abroad. You know, we're a nation of immigrants. On this podium, we know we are a nation of immigrants. Democrats believe in immigration because immigration have made and will continue to make our country the greatest in the world. And we all have an immigrant story. Most of us do. My dad came to this country in 1935 to escape persecution in Germany. He had not much more than a shirt on his back. He spoke virtually no English, and he knew no one. This country gave him a chance to succeed. That story <coughs> is the same for most of you. And like my dad, most of your relatives would be deported under Project 2025. There's no doubt that our immigration system is broken. The system at the border is broken. The visa system is broken. It isn't working for folks who are here or people who want to come here. And it also isn't working for our communities and our businesses who rely on temporary workers to fulfill critical roles. That's why Democrats spent months negotiating with Republicans and developed a compromise border bill. That bill was the strongest border security bill in a generation. It was endorsed by the National Border Patrol Council and the Union of Border Patrol Agents, and we all know what happened. I'm not going to go through the details. They're well known to everyone. Republicans killed it because Republicans under orders from Donald Trump, would rather talk about the border than act to fix it. And because they have a different plan for their party taking power, it's a terrifying, draconian police state in which family separation is the law of the land, due process is discarded, and private prison contractors make millions while dreamers are deported. Project 2025 would dismantle the DACA program that has given thousands of young people who know no other country than America the ability to study, work, and give back to the communities they call home, our communities, where they are our friends, our co-workers, fellow students. In effect, it demands we turn our back on people seeking seeking safety and refuge, which has always been the hallmark of America. The lady who stands at the harbor of New York with the beacon of hope and opportunity for this country has always been about the American dream. Project 2025 is a draconian end to that American dream. And it is in America. We don't want to live in it. And we should reject it. Senator Schatz on national security. Picture in 2025 <coughs> the White House Situation Room as a crisis abroad is unfolding. Normally, the president would gather their top experts, intelligence officials, military leaders, and others to get the latest information and discuss the next steps. Except according to Project 2025, the people sitting around that table, if Donald Trump is president, would not be there on the basis of their rank, their experience, <coughs> or their expertise. Their primary qualification would be loyalty to Donald Trump. So rather than a room full of experienced military officers, career diplomats, and intelligence analysts, there'd be a bunch of Trump loyalists happy to nod their heads while he does what he wants. Donald Trump spent his entire first term making one foreign policy blunder after the other, pretending that selling out America was somehow 
America first. But even then, a lot of traditional Republicans, including here in the Senate, took some comfort and maybe some cover in the fact that there were, quote, adults in the room to keep him in check. Don't worry, they said. But if the chaos of his first term was somehow chalked up, up to a series of unhappy accidents, now we know this is their actual plan. It's there in plain writing. Anyone, whether they're an intelligence official or a diplomat or an analyst who's willing to show any independence, who's not willing to blindly go along with whatever he says, will simply not be in the room this time. Last term, you could say it was a series of unhappy accidents. This time, it's their plan. And that is not me making a partisan allegation. It is in writing, laid out in no uncertain terms in Project 2025. So make no mistake, there is a plan to turbocharge and institutionalize the chaos we saw during Trump's first term. And all of us will be less safe because of it. Thank you, Senator Schatz. Last but certainly not least, Senator Warnock on workers' rights. If you are a billionaire, Donald Trump is very concerned about you. But if you are an ordinary working class American, uh, he apparently believes that your wages are too high and your taxes are too low. Project 2025 leaves almost no one unscathed, but that is especially true for working people. His Project 2025 eliminates protections that would allow, uh, allowing corporations to get away with not paying overtime to workers, taking money out of the pockets of more than four million low-income American workers. These are folks who work every single day, and I'm always just frustrated uh, and uh, without words trying to understand folks who talk about the importance of work, but they're always sticking it to workers. And uh, Project 2025 advances that agenda. His Project 2025 also would end guaranteed weekly time and a half pay and prevent workers from banding together to improve their working conditions, all under the guise of helping workers, but in reality selling them down the river. Project 2025 proposes wiping out child labor rules that protect minors from working inherently dangerous jobs. Project 2025 prohibits the collection of workplace discrimination data, stripping victims of a means of, of, a means of proving uh, their case in court. Uh, this is Donald Trump's plan. Uh, he is focused on improving the lot of people like himself, because apparently they are suffering, and uh, he wants to make it hard for hardworking American people. Here, here's what I believe. People don't mind working hard. They just want to share in the prosperity that they're helping to create uh, for others. They want a livable wage. They want to be able to retire with dignity. They want health care. Project 2025, Donald Trump's Project 2025, is one huge step in the wrong direction. When I talk to Georgians, it is clear that the more they learn about Project 2025 and the ways in which it will hurt their pockets, the more alarmed they become about Donald Trump's plans for their future. Uh, the choice in this election could not be more stark, and I believe that the American people are going to make the right choice. Okay, we'll take questions to any of us on this subject first. Yes. Um, uh, Project 2025 says that uh, for the Treasury Department, um, the administration should, quote, take affirmative steps to expose and eradicate the practice of critical race theory and diversity, equity, and inclusion, end quote, throughout the agency. Does, does agencies and the Treasury Department need federal protections to keep their, say, Office of Minority Women in Inclusion? Look, we have always department? believed in diversity as a country and as a party, and we think that Project 2025 probably, probably doesn't even give a hoot about diversity. Yes. Um, 
it's related, NBC News reported today that the Trump campaign asked Senator Lindsey Graham to go to Nebraska and push a winner-takes-all strategy to change the electoral vote. That's a stretch that it's on this <laughs> subject. Process, well, kind of. But process that's all right. right. We will, we will. So, you have senators who can speak to this subject. So, so what is your reaction to that, that they are doing, they are pushing this strategy, according to our reporting? Look, they're very worried about the election as they should be. The American people every day see the contrast between what they have proposed in things like Project 2025, the subject of this uh, uh, little discussion, and what Trump, what uh, we are calling for. And so they're worried. You want to say Just something? One more thing is that, you know, this is his old playbook, right? He tries to change the rules um, in the middle of an election, or they try to get rid of Saturday vote leave. Um, right at the end of the Georgia Senate race. Or they claim, uh, once they lose, uh, that they need 11,000 more votes and that the election wasn't okay. There are little criminal cases going on against fake electors around the country. So in this case, they're just trying to change the rules in the middle of the game that have already been set and been set for a long, long time, all those elections run in Nebraska. So I just, I think they try to mess around with elections all the time, and the people have had it, and you look at what happened even back in 2022 when over 30 percent of people that voted Democratic said that the democracy was, a, 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 was the major reason for it because they don't want to see the Speaker of the House's husband bludgeoned with a hammer. They don't want to see people in camo in Arizona in lines. They've been messing around with these elections for a long time and the American people are on to it and they will be on to it in Nebraska. They can't uh, win. They can't. Go ahead. I, I literally had to sue the state of Georgia. <laughs> So that folks can vote the first weekend of the runoff. And now as you're watching what's happening in Georgia with these shenanigans from the state elections board, they are clearly trying to set up a scenario in which they could refuse to certify an election whose results they don't like. It's turning democracy on its head rather than the people picking their officials. The officials are, are getting to, to decide which people get to vote. So they can't win legitimately, so they always try to change the rules at the last minute. The good news is we've been prepared for this for a long time, led by Mark Elias. We have knocked back so many of their incursions on people voting. Yes? Uh, Peter Schumer, uh, I'll admit this isn't a stretch. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Are you prepared to move forward with the spending bill, or will you let the House continue to stew in its own juices? Well, look, you know, the bottom line is very, very simple. And that is, you need a bipartisan agreement to get things done. And hopefully, Speaker Johnson will learn that. He's not, by trying the partisan route, he's flopped totally, flopped right on his face. So we have filed today. Uh, and if, if the House can't get its act together, we're prepared to move forward. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Schumer, you have called on Johnson multiple times now to work with you in a bipartisan manner to keep the government open, but Trump on Truth Social last night said if Republicans don't get Save <coughs> Act, every ounce of it, they should not agree to a continuing resolution in any way, shape, or form. Given that immense pressure from the President, can you really realistically expect Johnson Republicans, to Republicans, many Republican you? House members, as many of you have reported, are smart enough to know that if there's a shutdown, it will be a Republican shutdown that they know that them, the people know Democrats do not want a shutdown, and they realize that Donald Trump, when it comes to legislating, doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Yes? When it comes to the CR, do you have any red lines when it comes to disaster relief as well as a potential yeah. secret service? We're not going to negotiate back? in public on this issue. Yes? Big, bigger picture, picture question. Let's say you all are successful in defeating Donald Trump in November and <laughs> Project 2025 Do you believe that that would kind of extinguish Trumpism as we know it? Do you, do you feel like this is an opportunity well, for look, Democrats? Well, look, I mean, I would hope that should Donald Trump lose, and I believe he will, that Republicans will realize that following Trump is a path fraught with terrible consequences for the nation, but also bad political consequences for themselves. Peter yes. Trump, yes, good morning. Has there been any conversation between you and the Speaker about this or this idea that you're going to file cloture on a vehicle, this is all just a wink and a nod, he might make another play, you guys pass your bill next week, send it over, everybody gets the drill? 
not negotiating in public. That's not negotiating. I'm trying to understand, <laughs> have you had a conversation with the Speaker of the House? That's a yes I'm or no not, question. I'm not negotiating in public. Yes. Some Senate Republicans have voiced frustration over not getting the appropriation bills on the floor that have passed out of committee or having the IVF vote this week instead of moving on NPR. What's your response to that? Listen, the bottom line is that it was Leader McConnell who didn't want to move forward. He said, let's see what the House will do. But as you heard him say yesterday, a shutdown would be a disaster, and it's clear from his language he doesn't agree with what the House is doing. Yes? Um, the crypto industry is spending millions of dollars specifically in Senate races. I know a lot of them are boosting some Democrats in those races, but they are also working against others. Are you having any frustration with the influence that they could be having? Look, the bottom line is that it was Republicans who blocked a crypto bill uh, that Senator Stabenow had put together on the Ag Committee last year, and we're going to have to figure out how to move forward from here. Last one. Can I quickly, Project 2035. Ah, thank you. Part of the terms of the platform is reallocating. Next time I'll call on you first. <laughs> <laughs> reallocating military resources, calling <coughs> troops from overseas to the border, to uh, naval patrols around the Gulf of Mexico. Do you think that's something that could be done, or you know, what are the ramifications of that? I think that was Senator Scott. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a member of the Armed Services Committee as well as Veterans Affairs. Uh, this militarization of immigration policy would be a national security disaster. Our military leadership is deeply against it. Troops on the ground think it compromises their mission, and it really illuminates Donald Trump's total misunderstanding of the United States military as a force for our national defense, not for his personal preferences to demagogue an issue. And I think that's the reason why our military leadership thinks so negatively about it. Senator Schott, the last word. Uh, just that we have a lot of very dangerous adversaries around the world, and it shows that Donald Trump considers Mexico and Canada to be more dangerous than Iran and North Korea and China. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Thank you. You don't, you don't think Trump might run in 2028 again? <laughs>